Hello and welcome back to Minecraft. Today we're going to be taking a look at some of the new features in Snapshot 13W02B. Uh, this includes Quartz, which is quite a nice new block that's been added. We're currently in the default texture pack, as you can see. Um, here, it, here it is. Here's some Quartz. It's kind of like marble. I uh, think Jeb said himself that um, Quartz was kind of like the alternative to marble. Um, and the way you get it in the game, in the vanilla game, is by Quartz Ore, which is found in the nether. Uh, this is mineable with a wooden pickaxe, would you believe it? And down here on the floor, we've got all the different shades of white textures, white textured blocks. Um, these are the shades of grey, uh, or white. Um, yeah, so I was, just, I was just comparing it to snow to start off with. Um, you can see that the quartz has got a slight yellow tint or tinge to it compared to the uh, very vi vibrant, it's kind of a vibrant white of the snow. Um, and obviously more um, noise found, which is more, more of these um, you know, darker bits in the snow um, to give it more texture. Quartz is very smooth. Um, it is called a block of quartz. Um, you actually have smooth sandstone. Let's have a look at this. I've got um, the different types of quartz block here. And to compare it to sandstone, which is probably one of the most similar blocks which you could compare it to. Um, I've got chiseled quartz here, which is kind of like a maze um, texture. It looks a bit Aztec in some ways. And then next to it we've got uh, striped, I think, or a pillar, pillar of quartz, which is obviously very good for columns. We've got a column back here, uh, vertical texture, good for uh, vertical energy. Um, yeah, and we've also got uh, the quartz stair block, which is the same texture as the normal block. Um, normal block also halves into quartz slab, which is quite useful in some cases. I've just uh, been experimenting here with um, maybe a column um, bottom, column base, made purely with um, quartz stairs. It's quite good. And then back here we've also got uh, a sort of ruined, just playing with quartz seeing what it would look like. Um, you can't actually build, I don't know if they have data values, I haven't tried it with um, Sniper yet, obviously because it's a snapshot, but I don't know if it has horizontal um, pillar texture, so you can you could do sort of, you know, uh, fallen over pillars. I uh, wouldn't presume it would have that texture, but anyway, maybe something for the future. They are the um, biggest updates in 1302B. We've also got um, some other blocks and features from previous snapshots I think and previous updates which I haven't gone through before. I haven't really played around with these so uh, maybe you'll find something useful. We've got two normal press plates here, stone and wood. We've also got two new ones. We've got a weighted pressure plate um, both in light and heavy alternatives. Um, so by default they're textured gold and iron. Same texture as iron. These could be used as bright floor tiling in some cases and some builds possibly. Moving on here we've got the daylight sensor which is a half slab shaped block. It does not stack with itself as you can see here. Um, and it's kind of got like a honeycomb effect texture on top and a funny texture on the bottom and the sides which kind of looks like a chocolate bar so you could use that in many ways I kind of like that block actually you can make uh, sunshades I guess something like that very useful block and obviously it's, it gives off redstone signal. 
Um, here is the new TNT cart. This could be used in a mineshaft, for example. And you could pile these up um, next to each other in maybe a station or a depot, an underground depot, which is used for mining. Um, that could be an idea. We've got a beacon, which is quite old, quite an old block, but um, it goes very well with obsidian because it has the obsidian texture inside it um, to make a kind of inset um, top to a obsidian pillar, which is quite nice. And then if you uh, power it, obviously, put something in it, it will give off a beam above, um, which can be used in many ways. Um, one way which I thought of doing, which I haven't got around to actually, is um, you know the beacons in Lord of the Rings? Um, I believe it's the third film. Um, I shouldn't get that wrong because I just watched them over Christmas, so I think it's the third film where they light the beacons to um, get aid from... Uh, aid to Minas Tirith. That's right. Um, yeah, and they light the beacons. So you could use beacons kind of in Minecraft to light, like if you set them up with redstone or something, because um, you, you can unpower them with um, a redstone signal. Give them to them. So you could like light beacons um, across mountaintops, which would be pretty cool. Here is the new hopper block. Um, utility tool, very useful. I've seen so many uses for it on Reddit already. Um, like automated furnaces, um, automated minecart storage systems, stuff like that, because they work with chests. But from an aesthetic point of view, um, they're actually quite useful. You can see here um, the way they're placed. If I get one right here in my hand, is the um, lowermost t uh, block, you, you see they've got one, two, and then the third smallest block at the bottom. That block will change based on the um, block in which you right click on. So if I right click on the ground, which I have done with these three, the lower block, um, the opening of the hopper I guess, will go on, on that block, you know, straight down. But up here, as you can see, We've got a opening going left and an opening going right, and this is because I have right clicked on this block. See, it joins onto there. So, in order to, um, and also this, if I right click on, if I shift click, shift right click, the opening will point that way, which could be useful in some ways. Um, it's worth noting when you're building with hoppers. It's um, another alternative to anvils. They look quite similar to anvils, actually. Um, they have the same texture, almost. Um, anvils, obviously, used a lot for banisters or uh, railings in large mansions and buildings. So the hopper can be used in similar fashion. And it actually goes quite well with quartz, sort of an off grey or an off black colour um, combined with an off white. Because quartz is quite chic, um, so it's quite vibrant. If I just set the time to day again, you can see it's quite bright, um, even against the dark grey of the hopper. And uh, that's a dark grey cloth block believe. There it is, grey wool. Matches the hopper. So moving swiftly on, we have the redstone block. Now this is a very vibrant block texture. Look at it compared to the wool, the standard wool block. So much brighter. Um, and it's very nicely textured, it's got kind of like an indent to it, um, with the darker texture in the middle. I like how it's sort of splattered on there, and not um, as uniform as the red textures here. Also got a little comparison to nether rack, which is also sometimes used as a textured red block. 
could use this in your builds certainly as a as a punch block you know to draw attention to certain details of builds that'd be really useful um, possibly on uh, in warning builds like uh, lighthouses to draw attention to um, danger here we have a new chest it uses the same texture as a normal chest but it's got a little um, thing on it a little red bit and that means it's trapped which gives off means it gives off a redstone signal you can see there when opened which leads us on to the new uh, redstone block if you can call it a block um, which is called the comparator which performs a little LED when you right click it let's turn it on and off um, which is a bit different to the repeater I mean redstone torch that uses the same texture so I guess whatever texture pack you use it will take that texture and put it on there um, it can be handy in some cases if you want a little LED light right there maybe in uh, some computer builds now if we switch texture pack go out switch to the test Palsion pack and go back in you can see that with the new texture pack updates that Jeb, Jeb has implemented uh, the new textures will appear in the Palsion pack even though this is, you know, Palsion grass, Palsion sand, Palsion water. The new texture files are all individual. They don't take their um, graphics from little, you know, the little sprite sheet that you get um, in the texture pack zip. So you'll be able to see them. They won't be invisible anymore. You'll be able to see them in here. I mean, this is invisible. Don't worry about that. Um, yeah, so there they are. They're right there. And they'll, they'll obviously be low resolution if you're using a uh, HD pack. Uh, by the way, Minecraft now supports HD texture packs with this snapshot update. Um, by default, so you can just use HD texture packs without um, MC Patcher. Or whatever the alternative is. Optifine, I guess. Um, which is really good for people who like HD texture packs. I think they're okay in some cases. Um, on the voxel box we use a 16 pixel Palsion pack because we feel it's more um, you know more original and sometimes a lot of the blocks have more than one use you know at a lower resolution whereas if you increase the resolution they would have a more finite use you know definite use um, instead of being multiple multi-useful anyway um, so we, there are the new blocks we'll just go through obviously these new things oh this is a um, this is from Billy Joe on the server you're right Billy um, he modified the textures because you can now have animated textures in the game by default in uh, vanilla Minecraft and he put the numbers on um, the different oh man I'm not, I'm not sure how he did it exactly but you can see here he's got different data values of um, their wood planks so he's got oak spruce birch and jungle um, so I guess this one has it must have 10 texture faces right um, and he's put numbers on all of them so it will just go through. Oh my god, it's on the fence post. <laughs> um, yeah, so you, then what you can do is. Is this right? That one goes up. So, like that. And then. Mm, that one. And then that one. It's something like this. Anyway. You can tell the time that you've been logged in for. There. I think that is two minutes. Uh, I don't even know. 
I don't even know. I'm not going to try working it out. But, um, yeah, it tells you how long you've been in the game for. Um, which could be useful for build-offs. Um, you know, everyone logs out at the start of the build-off, and you get told to log in through vent, uh, and the timer starts so you can see, you can build your own timer, perhaps. Anvil is the um, same as it was. Hopper. Um, I don't think we'll change Hopper too much, because that, you know, probably change it to this sort of metal texture. Um, there's TNT cart in the Palcyon pack. That's the uh, same as it was. That probably changed quite a lot, I assume, in the Palcyon pack. Redstone block. Obviously, we've changed Nether rack to uh, a different texture. Ah, this is interesting. I was thinking that the trap chest would take the same texture as the normal test chest, but um, it appears it doesn't. And here, ah, the comparator uses the same textures from. Um, well, I guess it uses a normal base plate. That's the default grey um, base plate texture, but it takes um, the redstone texture, dark red, and also the um, redstone torch texture. Pops it on there. Very good, so that's what it would look like. Look at that, it goes up and down. Oh. Haha. <laughs> that's what it looks like in the uh, Passion pack. Very good. So there we go, we've uh, had a look at some of the new blocks in Snapshot 13W02B and previous snapshots and uh, patches. A few ideas for you to take away from this video and possibly use in your own builds. Stay tuned for more and subscribe if you like it and I'll see you next time.